Hello and welcome to my Swift tutorial series for beginners. Today you're going to learn how to manage a collection of data in what's called an array. If you're working with many pieces of data, it's going to be hard to manage them all using just constants and variables. So let's take a look at how arrays can make our life easier. All right, stay tuned. So Swift has a couple of collection types that you can use to manage your data easily and the one we're gonna talk about right now is called an array. And this is a collection type that is ordered by indexes. And that means that there is a specific order to this list of values. So you can see here in this demonstration or this example, it starts at zero and then it goes one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. And at each position, there is a value or a piece of data um, so there is a defined order and that's really important to know. Let's jump into the playground where I can demonstrate a need and an example of how to use arrays. So right here I've got three variables a, b, and c and let's say that I wanted to change these strings to my dog, my cat, and my bird. Well I can go about it this way and say uh, something like this. I can just add the word my with a space to a Right, so A is dog, I'm gonna add my in front of it and reassign it to A. So that would be my dog. So I can repeat this with B and C, but I mean, this is only an example with three items. Let's say we had 100 or 200 items, then that would be very, very tedious, right? What I could do is also, I can put these values into an array. And what that looks like is it starts with a pair of square brackets and each item in the array is separated by a comma. So I would have dog, comma, cat, comma, and then bird. So there's no comma at the end. It's only in between the actual items. So this is an array of three items with dog starting at index zero, cat at index one, and bird at index two. So just like what we saw here. You know, dog, cat, and bird. That is our array. So having this array is great, but we need some sort of way to reference the items in the array. So why don't we assign this array to a constant called my array. And in order to access these items, all I have to do is say my array and then use my square brackets and then put in the index of the value that I want. So if I want dog, I would put in index zero. So let's print that and we can see dog. If I wanted bird, I would put in index two, right? Because it starts at zero. All right, so in that case, I could do something like this. My array zero is equal to my space, my array zero kind of mirrors this statement, right? And this shows you that you can use this sort of same syntax. Ah, and there's actually an error here. This is a really great example because I'm trying to assign something into my array at index zero, but this is a constant, so I can't modify it after it's assigned. So I actually need to do variable like that. Let's make my array a variable. All right. so. This is great because it shows you that this syntax is to retrieve the item at index zero, but I can also assign things into index zero using this assignment operator like that. Right, so the resulting value at index zero is, you guessed it, my dog. Right, but this isn't very efficient either. I mean, I'd have to write this line three times or however many times for, you know, however many pets I have. So this is where it gets really powerful because you can use loops, we learned way back then, in conjunction with arrays. So let me show you how that works. So for example, let's use a for loop or a for in loop, I mean. Let's say there's a counter in zero to two. All right, so now I can say, uh, see I can, well, 
why don't we just print it out for now? So we can print out my array and then let's access the index. I can put in counter in there. So let's see what that looks like if I run this code. See, it'll print out my dog, cat, and bird, but actually it's because this line modified what was at index zero. So let me get rid of that line and let me print this again. So you can see dog, cat, and bird. It's merely printing out each index of that array, but already this is really powerful, right? Because we have one line of code and it's being looped three times, but each time it loops, it's doing something different. What if we did something like this? What if we did my array counter is equal to my right space plus my array counter? All right now we're talking because what we're doing here is each iteration of the loop, we are accessing that index and then we are adding my in front of it and then we're reassigning it to that same index, basically changing the value um, and then we're printing it out here. So if I had 200 items in my array, I would just change this to 199, right? And that's very little code compared to what we were doing up here, right? So you can start to see how powerful it is to use arrays with loops. Now, what if we didn't know the range of the array, right? Right here, I'm assuming that I know there are three items in here. That's why I'm doing this range, zero to two. Well, the array comes with some handy properties that we can use. One of them is called count, which returns how many items are in the array. It always starts at zero, so we're gonna start at zero if we want to access the first item in the array. However, we are actually, uh, we can use the count property of the array. So we can do my array dot count, but you're gonna run into a problem with this. Let me show you why. So if I run this code, you're gonna get my dog, my cat, my bird, and then index out of range. Whenever you see this error index out of range, you start to think this error message means that we're trying to access an index that doesn't exist in that array. It's out of the range of the array. Well, why is that? Because my array.count returns the number of items in the array, right? So it returns three. So our loop actually goes from zero to three inclusive. So it's gonna start at zero, it's gonna do one, and then it's gonna do two, and then it's going to do three and there is no fourth item in our array, right? This is zero, this is one, this is two. And when it tries to access index three, there's nothing. And that's why it crashes and gives us this error index out of range. So what we actually have to do when we're working with arrays like this and we wanna um, basically use this count in, in a loop, we have to do this minus one. Um, and then that's going to go from zero to two, essentially. Now it's really good that you know about the count property now of the array because that's really useful, but there's actually an even easier way to write this for loop. We can do something like this. For each item in my array, do something with it. And that's really the easiest that, um, you know, the easiest that you can get. So you can do, you know, if you need the index for some reason and you need to do something with it, you need to reassign something, then you'd have to use this method where you're accessing, uh, where you're getting the index. But if you just want to, let's say output each item or you want to, uh, you know, use each item without reassigning it into the array, then this sort of format is great. What it's going to do is it's basically going to loop through every single item in my array and put it into this variable for you to use. So let me comment this part out. Actually, let me, let me just comment this whole thing out. And just a quick tip, if you wanna comment out a whole block of code, you can press command backslash and that just takes care of that. So when we run our code here, so you can see this loop 
very simply is just printing out the items of the array. So this is a quick and easy way to loop through items in the array. All right, some other cool things I wanna show you, um, how to declare an empty array. I think this is really important to know because right here we are um, initializing this variable to this array. But what really is the data type for this array if you were to uh, explicitly write it? Well, I'll tell you, it is an array. So there's square brackets and inside you put the data type of the array, so string. This array can only contain string objects. I forgot to mention that part, that um, your items in the array will be the same data type. If you wanted to declare an array that is empty to start, uh, you could do something like this, let's say empty array. So you could just have an empty array like that, but you have to declare the data type because there is no data type inside this empty array uh, for Xcode to determine what data type that array should be. That's why we have to explicitly specify that right here. Or if you don't do this, you can do something like this. Let's do empty array two is equal to you could do that as well. So this is basically creating a new array object, right? This is a type, it's a string array. And you're basically creating a new object of that string array type, and it's not gonna contain anything by default. All right, now let me show you some ways to work with arrays in terms of adding items and removing items. So you can, let's add items first. So you can uh, do my array, there's methods like append, so you can append a new element, or you can even insert. So you can insert a new element at a particular index. And it's not gonna overwrite it, it's just gonna push everything back. So let's say I wanted to insert a frog at index zero. Then if I, let's say I copy this down here and I print out the items again, you're gonna see that uh, it starts with frog this time and then it goes dog, cat, bird. So it inserted frog at zero and it pushed everything else back. Now, another way you can add things, you can go plus equals just like that. And then you can add a number of items to the back of the array. So I can do frog, bear, and why don't we move this print statement down here and let's see what is in our array at this point. So we have frog, dog, cat, bird, frog, and bear. Oh, and that was, that's because I inserted frog at the beginning and then I appended frog and bear at the back. So that's our resulting array. All right, so let me just write it here in case you download the playground. Um, that's another animal that I can use. There's so many animals out there. Raccoon. It's not like I saw a raccoon out there, but <laughs> it just popped into my mind. All right, remove items. So my array you can remove a particular item at a specific index like that, it's gonna remove that item and everything is gonna shift to fill its, uh, its place. Uh, we can remove all, right? We can remove first and remove last. We can remove the first number of items. So there are a lot of options here. Like I said, these collection types are meant to make your life easier to manage uh, collections of data and that's why there are so many handy methods for you to use. Another thing that you might find yourself wanting to do is searching for a specific item in your array or maybe finding out if an item exists in your array or not. Search your array. And the method to use for that is, uh, there are a couple of options. There used to be one called index of, so you can, uh, it returns the index 
of the item that you search for. Uh, if it doesn't exist in your array, it would return negative one. Um, otherwise, it would return the actual index. But now there are methods like first index of, which returns the first index where the specified value appears because theoretically, like we saw before, frog existed at index zero and existed at index maybe six or something like that in our array. And then alternatively, there is also last index of. So you're searching from the back towards the front and it's gonna return the last index of that item, which you're looking for. So those are a couple of handy ways for you to do some searching within your arrays. What I've covered in this lesson is enough for you to get the main benefits out of using arrays. As we continue to build apps together, we're going to learn new ways of using arrays, but for now, this is more than enough. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Now click on over there for the next lesson and I'll see you there.